peace be with you. Welcome to The Dean Show, internationally viewed all over the globe. And we talk about that crucial question. In one point in your life, you start thinking, what's the purpose of life? You've been to all the parties. You've imitated the movie stars. You've seen them on Xanax. Their life's all the way upside down. And you start thinking, man, why am I here? Why have I been created? And then you hear Islam, you hear Christianity, Jesus. And, you know, that's the conversations that you got to start having. You got to start, you know, learning about what was Jesus' mission? What was Muhammad's mission? What did these people call to? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the purpose of life. And in the mix of it, we have the author, John Fontaine, who was a former Christian, started to really think. He didn't want to blindly follow his forefathers and parents, and he came to the conclusion that Islam, submission to the will of the Creator, is indeed the truth because it's based on evidence and proof. It's a believable, simple message. You're going to learn the message that it contains, that was brought by all the messengers, and this book that he wrote, fascinating, Jesus... Well, if you didn't know, you're going to learn that we love Jesus and the message that we, he came with, the Injil, and it's original. All of this and more here in The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Show. Peace be with you. Assalamu Isn't that a greeting of Jesus? The greeting of peace, yes. Right. The greeting of all the prophets and messengers. They came with a greeting, Assalamu alaikum, which is peace be with you. Peace be with you. You wrote a yeah. book called Jesus and the Injil. Now, there yes. are, some people are like, what is a Muslim? And, you know, for those that don't know, right now you're reading it on the, on the screen. It's showing you what a Muslim is. Some people mm. get terrified. They get mm. really scared. They hear Muslim, Islam, mm. Sharia, and they just go berserk. And they mm. turn into the Deen Show and they start having love for Islam. They're like, man, these guys are okay people. <laughs> You know, they're great. I think I want to be a Muslim. Call yeah. right now. If you've already, like, don't waste a second call, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Or you can do it at the end. But we prefer, do it now because you'll know when death's going to come. Yeah. And people have been going to parties because that's what it is. You know, yeah. like, it's like work hard from, yeah. from, from Monday to Friday and you got to party. And we talked about in another show before with you. We've had you here before that you, you went through that life and it got played out, didn't it, quickly? Yeah. yeah. Just constantly chasing your dreams, chasing life, chasing money. And you don't, you know, you're not happy. You mm -hmm. can't buy happiness. You can't buy happiness. Mm -hmm. And now people associate with religion with being just weird. And many of the academics, the thinking people, mm -hmm. they're like, as soon as you bring up religion, they think that something, you know, weird is going to be, you know, uh, brought to, to, to them. But Islam is nothing weird. And you realize that when you actually, mm -hmm. you, you stopped um, mm -hmm. uh, believing in things that were not believable. Trinity. Yeah. And you started believing something yeah. believable. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, like you said, Islam is, is uh, well, religion in general is seen as like uh, something that, you know, it can't be true. But in fact, it's, it's a logical explanation of why and how we're here. You know, it, the, the Quran tells us, uh, Allah tells us in the Quran, he, he poses a question, uh, did you create yourself or did you come from nothing? You know, it, it, logically, nothing can come from nothing, nothing can create yourself. There has to be a cause, there has to be a, a purpose, you know. And someone who doesn't believe in a purpose, that's, it's not believable. No, it doesn't make yeah, sense that, the, make that sense. the creation is purposeless. Exactly. It doesn't make sense. Exactly. There has to be a cause. You know, I always tell people, look around you. Everything from this microphone, test one, two, three, has a purpose, yes. right? That jacket, you know, everything, the buttons on the jacket, everything, the keys in your pocket, it mm. all has a purpose. Mm. The purpose of life, which is to submit our will and submit and worship the Creator. Now that's what you talk about in your book, Jesus in the Injil. Mm -hmm. So you were a former Christian, yes. and at a young age, you started really dwelling deep into Christianity. You used to go to the, uh, the uh, Church of England. Yeah. You were attending all the uh, Bible studies classes, yes. is that right? Yeah, I was very Tell active. us a little bit about this. Yeah, well, I was uh, brought up in the Church of England uh, church, and we, I went to church, I was studying the Bible, 
uh, taking part in the masses and also uh, I used to play the church organ so mm -hmm. I was very active uh, on that side as well and uh, I remember an, uh, uh, the first memory I have of this was we was asked to write a song about God and my chorus was Jesus and God, Jesus and God Okay, and I remember the vicar coming over grabbing the paper and scribbling out and saying Jesus is God and this was the first time that I began to actually question Christianity. Before this, I just accepted everything. Mm -hmm. And this was only, I must have been maybe eight or nine years old, very young. But I was questioning the, 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 I was questioning the religion of Christianity. And then I, I, you know, I was constantly questioning and trying to figure out what the difference is between the, the actual church doctrine and the Bible. You know, what the Bible teaches and what, Church doctrine is, is, is something often which is quite different. Well, before we dwell more into that, you were eight. How about the person that's 80, the other person that's 18 or 28? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking about Jesus, Abraham, Muhammad. Aren't these the names, the key figures that we mm -hmm. got to talk about if we're going to ascertain what really the truth is? They're going to be in mm -hmm. the equation. You can't just make up your own religion and just say, okay, the, you know, I'm going to do my own thing and then present this to, to the creator. Is yeah. that, that yeah, doesn't I mean, work, does I it? mean, if there is a, you know, we, we come to the conclusion that there's a creator, the, the way he has communi communicated with mankind is through prophets and messengers. You know, prophets such as Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all. And he has given them messages. And we know in the Quran, the, Allah tells us in the Quran that he's, he's given the, uh, the Torah to Moses, uh, the Zabur to Prophet David, the Injil, uh, which is a message given to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and the final revelation, which is the Quran to the whole of mankind, which is the, which is the Quran given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's what we're going to be focusing today, because you mm. actually went, you accepted Islam, mm. and you're basically, from, you're Irish... Uh, well, English. English, uh, Irish. One of, one of my grandparents is from Ireland. Yeah. Uh, but I'm from England, Manchester in yeah. England. That's uh -huh. where I was brought up and raised. Yeah, so mm. they can't tell you, like, if you go back to... Have you visited Ireland? Yeah, I've been twice before. Yeah. They, they can't tell you because, like, they go back home now. I mean, or if you go Manchester, I mean, you're English, you know, because people think, like, okay, you're Muslim. They say, okay, you Muslim, go back home. Where you Like, <laughs> there's a particular country yeah. where Muslims come yeah. from. Muslims are from all walks of life. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is the beautiful thing about Islam. Uh, you, when you travel the world, the more you travel, you see these Muslims from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, one memory I've got, I actually traveled to Bosnia uh, for one of the funerals. And I've, if, every year they have a funeral of the people who have been uh, killed. And I was praying with 70,000 white Muslims. You know, the feeling was amazing. You know, this, this was when I uh, had only been Muslim for a few months. And when I, I, I seen this, you know, I really felt that Islam is, is amazing, truly amazing. It's universal, it's for, yeah, for, you know, for everyone. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Yeah. So that's what we, I opened the show talking about Jesus, Abraham, Muhammad. These were messengers of God. Yes. You talk about the specific message that Jesus brought, yes. the Injil. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Talk about this. Well, the first, the first point is that uh, as Muslims, uh, Allah tells us in the Quran, He names some of the messages which He's sent throughout time. So first of all, He mentions the Suhuf given to uh, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. He mentions the Torah given to Musa or Moses. He, he mentions the Zabur given to David and also the Injil uh, given to Jesus, peace be upon him. So these were specific revelations given to the Prophets. So say them again, you had the Torah, the... Yeah, the, 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 the Suhuf given to Abraham, Torah given to Moses, the Zabur given to David, and the Injil given to Jesus, peace be upon him. So these are specific revelations given to the Prophet. This is communication coming from, not the Creator becoming part of His creation to deliver the yes. message. He's sending... He's sending the, the message to, to tell us what is the purpose of life, how to live our life, and this is this is how he communicates. That, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. We can we can comprehend someone making something, and you have a instruction manual. Then yeah. the representative, yeah. right, that goes and you know defines everything yeah. for you. Yeah, that's the messengers. That's the messengers. Yeah. Yeah. So continue on. Now the interesting point about this is when we look at the Bible, uh, what is known to be the Torah today, 
he's actually speaking about the Torah. He's actually speaking about an original revelation rather than actually being the Torah itself. The same with the, the Psalms. If you look at the Psalms, it's a collection of 150 poems, uh, which is written, claimed to be written partly by David, uh, Prophet David, peace be upon him, and, and other authors as well. Uh, this is not what we believe. As Muslims, we believe in a specific revelation given to David. But to stick on the actual topic of the Injil, which is the one which I've, I speak about uh, in the book, now, the, the Gospels, what we have today, the New Testament, is actually a collection of writings by various different authors, such as Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and other writers like Paul. Now, these, <coughs> these scriptures are writings which came after Jesus, okay? So the, the Christian scholars accept that Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and the other writings were writings after Jesus, okay? But the interesting part is that when we look at these scriptures, they're actually referring to the original scripture given to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is a part of the, the topic of the book. So when, we, when the Christian <coughs> opens up the Bible, and he sees Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Were these the disciples of Jesus' writing? Uh, to be honest, we don't know who they was. They're un unsigned documents. We, we're not sure on the writers of them. But, as I said, the interesting part is when we refer to them uh, as historical narrations, which came after Jesus, they're speaking about a revelation in the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to Mark chapter 1, uh, verse 14 and 15, he actually says, uh, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of God. Okay, so it, Jesus was actually preaching the gospel in his lifetime. So these later scriptures of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are speaking about a gospel which Jesus was preaching in his lifetime. If we go to the next verse, it's actually a command of Jesus. He says, "Repent and believe in the gospel." Okay, so here we have. I mean, if you hear the word gospel, you would automatically think of the New Testament, okay? Yeah. And you start to look into the New Testament for, for guidance. Well, here, the New Testament, the books within the New Testament, are referring to a gospel within the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. so, can you, so this is it's a very important point. The most important part of this point is when you go to the oldest scriptures of the Bible. Now, the oldest scriptures of the Bible, of, sorry, of the New Testament, are in Greek. Okay, now the oldest scriptures of the Bible have something very significant, which is very important. And if you remember the point before, when, when I was mentioning that the Quran talks about a revelation given to Jesus called the Injil, now, subhanAllah, when we read uh, the Bible, so the, the scriptures of the New Testament in the original form, uh, in the oldest form, which is the Greek, it actually reads like this. And it says, and the same verse reads, that when Jesus came to Galilee, he was preaching the Injilian of God. Mm -hmm. And the next verse is, Jesus says, repent and believe in the Injilian. SubhanAllah. So but when, when you look at the translations uh, in the English, uh, they translate uh, to be good news or the gospel. And you can't see that it, this word is being used. It's a very important point because the Christians won't know this word Injilian. Uh, actually say that this word in Gilean means good news. Yeah. But there's other parts of the Bible which refer to the Injilian to be more than good news. Yeah, let's take a break and we'll yeah. come back with more here on The Dean Show. I want you to imagine you wake up and in front of you are a bunch of guys running around kicking a ball. No goals, no lines, no rules. What would you think? But is that your life? Surely every sport has its goal. Every game has its end. It has its objective. It has its rules. How about life? How about our life? Isn't there a goal to life? Isn't there a purpose, an objective that we have to reach? We think so. The Quran tells us that we exist in order to worship God and worshiping God means knowing God, as the Quran says. Worship though is not some narrow, small thing. It's wide, it's vast, it encompasses everything that the human being does. 
everything that you do, everything that you think, everything that you feel can be done, thought, said, felt in a way that is either pleasing or displeasing to God. The purpose of life is to try and do everything in a way that God loves and God is pleased with. That is your goal. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with the author of Jesus and the Injil. So you were talking about how in English it's translated. It's actually mentioned in the verbatim word of the creator, the Quran. It talks about Jesus giving this Injil. Yes. And then in the... What language is it? In, in the oldest scriptures of the New Testament, in the Greek, it's using the word Injilion. 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 Now, yeah. why are they translating this to good news in, in, in English? Well, this is, this is the question. Yeah. You know, this is the problem with translations. Yeah. This is actually the miracle of Islam. You know, because the, the Quran is fully preserved in its original language, uh, as it was revealed in the Arabic. And you can't translate a message from God. You're going to lose... Uh, the, the true message lost in translation exactly yeah. so when we when we come to the the, the point of uh, of translating this word in Gilean, uh when we when we look at the new revised standard version of the bible for instance which which claims to go to the the oldest uh, greek text which we have we can see that the the translations uh, of the word in Gilean, they've 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 translated it in whatever word they want. So if we go to uh, Mark, for instance, the, the verse which I mentioned before, mm -hmm. it, it actually translates it as good news. So it actually reads, uh, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the good news of God. Well, that's not unique because every messenger came with good news. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and he, it, it says, repent and believe in the good news. But in the same translation, the New Revised Standard Version, in, in the same Bible, with the same word in Gilean, if we go to uh, Paul's writings within the Bible in Thessalonians, it, it translates the word in Gilean to be gospel. So, it, it, for instance, it says, uh, those who did not obey God, those who did not obey the Injilian. You, you can see. So, so now the, the Injilian is actually being described as a law, something more than good news. So many Christians have actually translated, or they say the meaning of, of Injilion, or Injilion, is good news, which we don't deny, because as you said, uh, the Quran tells us, Allah tells us in the Quran, that he gave all the prophets good news. But specifically, the Injil, the Zabur, and these other revelations were given to the prophets. And specifically, the, the Injil was given as a message to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. So when we say good news, because going beyond just good news, because yeah. we believe as, as Muslims, that the Creator sent messengers to guide us, yeah. and they all came with a warning, yeah, a warning, warning of the hellfire. Mm -hmm. If you worship another god besides God, mm -hmm. that can get you into the hell hellfire yeah. definitely, and or if you follow your desires. Mm -hmm. And they gave the good news of yeah. paradise coming, and the guidance as and well, and the guidance. Yeah. So the good news was yeah. that reward of paradise. Yeah. So that's interesting. The Quran preserves. Uh, per, we have in its original what was given to Jesus, the mm -hmm. Injil and Gilean. That's yeah. obviously, yeah. you know, the same uh, same book as as well. As we're saying, later scribes, uh, these these later writings are referring to something which Jesus had in his lifetime called the Injilion, mm -hmm. and they've they've commonly mistaken to to say that this word Injilion is only good news. But even the Bible itself refers to the Injilion being described as a law, being described as a message as teachings. So these are some of the subjects which we point out in more depth in the book. You also mentioned that a lot of Muslims make the mistake of saying that the, the translating also the, the Injil or the Bible yes. as being the, the New Testament exactly. or the Bible being as, as one of these books. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a... A mistake, unfortunately, which which even in the translations of, of some of the English translations of the, of the Quran, uh, the mistake has been made because we can see that they are translating Injil to Gospel, and and uh, Zabur to Psalms, but the Psalms is a collection of poems by different authors. This is not the Zabur, you know, and the Gospel, uh, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not claiming to be 
revelation. It's actually referring to the, the revelation, and even within them scriptures, it names this, this, this to be Injilion. So we shouldn't really be translating uh, these words, we should stick to the original. That makes sense. So what, 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 what would you advise Muslims now? Say what you just said to whatever the, the Creator says that He sent the Torah. We believe in the Torah in its original. In its original form, yes. Okay, but the, you can't say that the Torah is the Bible. Uh, or, no. the, or the Injil yeah. is the Bible. No. Comment on this. Yeah, I mean, for instance, the, the Bible, uh, it, if we look into the Old Testament, uh, it claims to have, they, they have something which they call the Torah. They have something which they call the Psalms within the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, we have the various different Gospels. But these are not, they, and they don't claim to be, revelations to the prophets. You know, as I mentioned before, that what is called the Torah today is speaking about a revelation given to Moses. What is the Psalms today is speaking about a revelation given to David. And what is the Gospels of today is also speaking about the revelation given to Jesus, peace be upon him. And these are specific revelations. And now, as, 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 as far as the Bible goes, I mean, many Muslims make the mistake uh, when they're conveying the message, and they did so with me as well, by saying that we believe in the original Bible or the original gospel. This, this is not actually correct. We believe in the, the original revelations given to the prophets and the names of them are in the Quran. Okay, so re reiterate that. So we believe in the original the original revelations given to the prophets yes. in their lifetime. And they not, are, not writings by various different authors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. And so, it's, and it's, a, it's, it's a very important point because if you look at the six articles of faith, uh, the six main articles of faith, which includes the belief in the books. Let, let's go over those because somebody yeah. right now is probably thinking, yeah. okay, they maybe watch some shows, so how do I become a Muslim? This yeah. is what you have to actually believe to become one who is submitting to the will of the Creator. And this is, mm. these six articles of faith, mm. this is something that's been there, you yeah. know, the, this doesn't change. This has been mm. there from the beginning, right? Mm. To believe in yeah. these things. So what are they? Well, the six main articles of faith are to believe in the Creator. The mm -hmm. one, one, yeah, one, Christ, believe one God. What it says, I believe in one God, but then they add Holy Ghost and Hol yeah. Holy Son. It's the correct, uh, the correct concept of the Creator, which is that He's one. He's self-sustaining, he's eternal, he doesn't have children, he's not a child, yeah. and there's nothing comparable to him. You can't imagine the Creator, it's beyond your comprehension. Yeah, okay. but if someone says, what's the big deal? I believe in one God. Yeah, mm. I believe in one God, but then, mm. you know, they say Trinity. Does that count? No, it doesn't. Uh, you have to believe in the correct concepts of God. As I said, that you can't imagine the Creator. So if you're saying that, that a human is a part of the Creator, then this is, this is not God. Put it to the test. Yeah, doesn't yeah. that go against also the uh, commandment in the Bible that says, Thou shalt have no other gods except, how, you know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, the, the first commandment uh, first. Of, of, of the Ten Commandments is that you, your Lord, your God is one, one yeah, God. Yeah, thou shalt have no yeah. uh, gods in the heavens and the earth yeah. or the sea, uh, yeah. sea below, just worship just the Creator. No, I, the second one is actually no partners to God, no, no idols. No idols. So this is covered in the Ten Commandments. Even if we go to John uh, 17 verse 3, uh, what is known as the declaration of faith, the Shahada, is there. Because it says, uh, the, the only way to eternal life is to believe in the only one true God and Jesus Christ who He is sent. And this is what we call the declaration of faith. Because in Islam we have, there's only one true God and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger. So it's the same declaration. Today, yes. it's, and Muhammad was sent as the messenger, yes. Jesus and he was sent as yes. a messenger, but not as a god. Exactly. Makes sense. We'll be right back to wrap it up here on the Dean's Show. Is there a purpose to our lives? Do we simply exist to make a living? Or were we meant for something greater? Something more meaningful. I looked everywhere for answers. And I found... Islam. I started my journey.
have you started yours? Back here on The Dean Show with John Fontana, the author of Jesus and the Injil. Yes. In the Bible, until it's translated, it's uh, in the, in, in the um, Semitic languages, it's, it's called what? It, well, in the, in the oldest Greek scripts, oh. it's called Angelion. 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 That's the yeah. message that was given from the Creator yes. to Jesus. Yeah. So what are our brothers in humanity, our brothers... Now that obviously we're brothers in humanity and uh, in the Quran, the Creator tells us that closest to us are those Christians, yes. right? Yes. So we really want the best for them. And what have they said? What has there been a response to, to um, what you're saying? Well, it's a mixed response, really. Um, as some of the Christians uh, claim, uh, still claim that the word Angelian just means good news. And although I've, I've actually shown them that it's referred to as more than good news. But then with more research, we can see that even uh, some of the Christian scholars uh, in, in the theological dictionary of the New Testament, uh, it also uh, states in uh, Frederick and Kittel that the Injilian appears to be a lone word which has been made up to describe the New Testament. You understand? So, so even, even the Christian scholars are saying that this word Injilian, it has no roots because... Many, many of the, uh, the Christians, they try to say that the word Injilian comes from the, root, the Hebrew word basura, which in Arabic is bushra, which is glad tidings or good news. But in fact, the, the, some of the scholars of Christianity are saying that this word Injilian, is, it's, been, it's been made up to actually describe the New Testament, which we know can't be true because the New Testament is saying that Jesus in his lifetime, so the New Testament which came after Jesus, is saying that Jesus in his lifetime used this word and the, the, the audience understood what this word was because he was specifically proclaiming it. As Mark says, uh, he, he, he was preaching the, the Angelion of God, not the Angelion of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the Angelion of God. And he also commanded, repent and believe in the Angelion. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, do we find anywhere in, in the Angelion, in the message of Jesus that he called people to worship himself alongside with God? Do we find it anywhere? And, well, and what um, about some of the evidence that people, people yeah. use? Like, you know, like the one, for instance, very famous that nobody comes to the Father except through me, yes. right? So you, you probably know most of the, the arguments that yeah. people make for him being divine. Yeah. So with your research and, now, I what, mean, what do you Regarding think? the original message given to Jesus uh, in its original form, uh, we no longer have it. It's not been preserved. Uh, this is why the Qur'an was revealed, because the Qur'an came uh, as, as the final revelation uh, to, to, to mankind uh, and the final message. Um, but regarding, uh, the, when we look at the Bible, there's many things that agree with Islam. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us that we, we, we're not to accept, uh, so, so not to deny uh, what they say, but we're also not to accept it. Okay? So we can see that there's many similarities in the Bible. For instance, Jesus is described, where he says, uh, you have to accept Jesus as well. You have to accept the God. No one can come through to the Father. No one can have eternal life except if you believe in the one true God and Jesus who he sent. Uh, Jesus also describes himself within the Bible as a prophet. Uh, Mecca is described as a place of pilgrimage. Mecca and his well, and its well. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's described as a place of pilgrimage. Jesus praying uh, with his head on the floor. There's many uh, similarities. And Allah tells in the Quran to come to common ground with, with the Christians uh, to show them uh, the, the similarities. We're, we're almost Islam. out of time. Two more points. Yeah. Uh, um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No mm. one comes to the Father except through me. What do you guys say about that? Well, the, the, true, the true message of Jesus is, it, listen to what he says. He says, no one can uh, have eternal life except if you believe in the messengers. You have to believe in all the messengers uh, which have come to humanity. Yeah. And the final messenger, which is uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then, I, and then earlier you talked, you, you mentioned the one God, not with a trinity, just mm. one God, one. Yeah. And then the other five articles of faith, what are they? Well, you, you, if... Before we leave, we're almost yeah. out of time. So uh, one God, yeah. believe, in, believe the, in one God. Believe in the prophets, belief in the books, and this is the correct concept of the books. This is, this is how important this is to the, the subjects which we're talking about. It's so important to understand, yeah. even as Muslims. Uh, belief in the Day of Judgment, 
a belief in uh, the unseen, such as the angels, and also a belief in divine decree. So these are the This is ones. it. If someone But the main thing, like you said, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, he worshipped one God. He was not Jewish or Christian, and the God which he worshipped did not include Jesus. It didn't? No. It didn't include a Holy Ghost. Of course. It just included the Creator that yes. Jesus worshipped, yeah. that we worship, that Muhammad called people to worship, mm. the one God. That's it. Cool. Worship the Creator, not the creation. Where can people get the book? Uh, the book is on JesusAndTheInjil.com. Uh, yeah, so you can you can download you can download and you can uh, order online as well. Thank you very much. We started with peace and we end with the same greeting that Jesus. Peace be upon you. That's the greeting that He used. Peace be with you. Thank As-salamu you. Alaykum. Alaykum. As-salamu. As-salamu. And yes, it's the truth, and you got to hear it here. Doesn't it just stimulate the mind? Doesn't it just connect with your heart? Worship the Creator, not the creation. And yes. Yes, God so loved the world. Yes, he did. That he sent prophets and messengers with guidance to guide humanity. That's how he shows his love. He doesn't send an unbelievable message that doesn't make sense and all these concepts that are just absurd and it's just you can't wrap your mind ar- around it. But you can wrap your mind around the worship of just the one creator. That's it. Everything else is the creation. We don't worship that which you can touch and you make with your own hands. No, we worship the one who created the sun and the moon, created you, me, the seven seas, the birds in the air, the fish in the sea, that one God. That's the only one that we worship. And if you were living during the time of Jesus, you had to follow him. Yes, he was the way, the truth, and the light. You couldn't bypass him, but never did he call people to worship himself alongside with God. He was subservient to God. He called people to worship God. He was the teacher illustrating how to do these acts of worship the same way Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was the last and final messenger who was a brother to Jesus. And you will learn all of this and more. Pick up the verbatim word of God, the Quran, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook so you can keep up with many of these hot topics that we got on the Dean Show and many other interesting facts Not fiction that you will pick up on here and it will just really enlighten you. You'll be enlightened. That's right. So we'll see you next time. Inshallah. God willing. Until then, we end with that greeting of peace. Peace be unto you. What are you going to do with it if somebody's been trying to deliver something to you? Like we've been trying to deliver the truth. That there's only one God that you worship Him alone, not His creation. Welcome to The Dean Show, one of the most exciting purpose of life talk shows in the world. Since 2006, The Dean Show has been working on clearing up the many false misconceptions about Islam and Muslims and at the same time delivering the simple message of the purpose of life in a fun and exciting way. One time I was at a restaurant, I was dressed like this and a woman came to me, she said, are you a rabbi? I said, yeah, I'm a black rabbi, you know? We want you to develop a better understanding about the pure Islam and the real message that it teaches. Peace, submission, surrender and obedience to Almighty God. To disbelieve in any one of the messengers of God is to disbelieve in all of them. Islam says love all mankind, that's why we're sharing this message because we want the best for you and we want the best for all mankind. We'll see you next time, God willing, on The Dean Show. Continue to tune in. Peace be unto you. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the